Hey everyone, today's lesson is rational versus irrational numbers. Take out your lesson worksheet if you have a copy. If you don't, grab a sheet of loose leaf paper and a pencil so you can take some notes and copy down the examples as we go through the lesson. Let's get started. Hey, here's the problem. We're going to classify the following numbers as rational or irrational. So we have 4.06 with a little line over the 6. We have pi, negative 15, 7 twelfths, the square root of 5, 0, 3.187, dot, 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 and the square root of 49. Now before we learn which type of numbers are rational, I think it's easier to start with the irrational numbers. So let's look at the four types of numbers that are irrational. A number is irrational if one of the following statements is true. First of all, it is a non-terminating decimal that doesn't repeat in an exact pattern. So non-terminating means it doesn't end. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. And not only does it not end, but it also doesn't repeat in an exact pattern. And that word exact is really important. Another type of irrational number is pi. Anytime you see the pi symbol or anything that includes the pi symbol, it is irrational. If you have a radical sign, little square root sign, and that number inside is not a perfect square, and we learned all about those perfect squares. Finally, if you have a fraction with a zero in the denominator. Now most fractions are not going to have a zero in the denominator, so that's pretty rare. Most fractions are rational numbers, but if you have a fraction that has a zero in the denominator, that is an irrational number. All right, let's go through. We're gonna using, use the statements above. We're gonna check each of the following numbers and circle the ones that are irrational. So based on what we just learned with these four types of irrational numbers. Let's look at these eight numbers and pick out the ones that are irrational. Now, I'm gonna go backwards on the list, right? Let's start with the fractions that have a zero in the denominator. I don't see any fractions that have a zero in the denominator. I see 7 twelfths, but that doesn't have a zero, so that's okay. All right, how about the number inside the radical is not a perfect square? Well, I've got two numbers with radicals. I've got the square root of 5 and I've got the square root of 49. The square root of 5 is going to be an irrational number because 5 is not a perfect square. right? So the reason that this is an irrational number is because 5 is not a perfect square. If that number had been a 4 inside the radical, then it would be a perfect square, right? And that would be a rational number. But because that's a 5, not a perfect square, it is irrational. Now, my other number in the radical is the square root of 49. 49 is a perfect square, so that's not irrational. Okay, I don't see any other radicals on here. Let's see. How about pi or anything including the pi symbol? Well, I got straight up pi right here. Once you see pi, that means it is an irrational number. And then finally, a non-terminating decimal that doesn't repeat in an exact pattern. So I need a decimal, first of all, that doesn't end. Well, I've got 4.06, and this little line above the 6 tells me that that's repeating. It tells me that this is 4.06666666. That's repeating. So that could be irrational. We're not sure yet. Um, then we have this other decimal over here, right? We have 3.187, dot, dot, dot. Okay, neither of these decimals are terminating, right? They are both repeating. However, if this one is 4.066666, that 6 continues indefinitely, that is in an exact pattern right there because the 6 is repeating over and over and over again. However, 3.187, it looks like a pattern, but it's not an exact pattern, right? 
In order for this to be an exact pattern, it would have to be 3.187, 187, 187, which it is not. So this is another example of an irrational number. And that's because it has no exact repeating pattern, right? And that word exact is so important because I definitely see a pattern in there. I could even guess what the next one would be, right? It would probably be 187, 1877, and then maybe 18777. It's definitely a pattern, but it's not exact. So we have to make sure that we check to make sure it's an exact pattern. So these are our three irrational numbers out of all of the numbers in our problem above. The remaining ones are all rational, and we're going to explain why right now. Okay, so these are all the different types of rational numbers. We have them listed on the bottom here. The first thing we have are whole numbers. So a whole number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's a 0 right here. This is an example of a whole number. So it is rational. Okay, integers are also rational, right? Integers are all whole numbers and they're opposites. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So negative 15 is rational because it is an integer. Next, we have a fraction, right? Fractions are rational as long as the denominator does not have a 0 in it. So 7 twelfths is a fraction. The denominator does not have a 0. So it is rational. Terminating decimals are also rational. If you have a decimal that ends like 1.75, that would be a rational number because it terminates or it ends. Repeating decimals are rational. So this is 4.066666. Once you see that little repeating bar, that tells you that it is rational because it is a repeating decimal. And then finally, if we have a perfect square inside the radical. Well, we've got the square root of 49 over here. The square root of 49 is 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. So that is a perfect square, which means it is rational. All right, let's move on to the next set of problems. All right, so you are going to classify each number as rational or irrational and explain how you know, right? Give a little reason, just like we did on the previous set of examples. At this point, you should turn off the video and you should try to classify these on your own. And when you're finished, Hit play and we'll check the answers together. All right, everyone, so let's check these answers. So we're gonna pick out the numbers that are rational and irrational. So we'll stick with our theme where we do our rational numbers in pink and we'll do our irrational numbers in blue. All right, this first one, five over six, this is a rational number right here. And the reason it's rational is because it is a fraction. And the other reason it's rational is because it's a fraction and the denominator is not a zero, right? So that's how we know it's rational. We've got the square root of 24. Now 24 is not a perfect square, so this is irrational. Right? And that's because 24 is not a perfect square. Not a perfect square. So I'm going to write all these reasons down so that we start to understand the difference. All right, this next one, it's 0 0.425369 4187. Now you might look at that number 
And you might think to yourself, this has no repeating pattern, so it's irrational. But here's the thing. In order for a number to be irrational, it has to be a non-terminating decimal, right? It's got to be a decimal that doesn't end. Well, there's no dot, dot, dot on the end here. So that means that this decimal is ending right here at the 7. So this is actually a rational number. And some people get confused with this one. This is rational. And the reason it's rational is because it's a terminating decimal, right? I'm going to say terminates. Okay, that means that it ends. All right, negative 7 over 3. Also, it is rational. The reason it's rational is because it's a fraction. And the reason it's rational and a fraction is because this is not a zero in the denominator, right? As long as it's not a zero in the denominator, that means it is rational. All right, two times pi. Well, once we see that pi symbol, that is irrational. It doesn't matter what's with it. Once you see pi, that is an irrational number because pi is a decimal that never ends and never repeats. All right, this next one, 2.013013 dot, dot, dot. Well, the dot, dot, dot tells me that it is not terminating, right? It's, it's a, um, a non-ending decimal. It's going to keep going on and on and on. So then we have to check and see if there's an exact pattern. Well, in this decimal, there is, right? It's 2.013013. That 013 is an exact repeating pattern. So this is rational. And that's because it has an exact repeating pattern. An exact repeating pattern. All right. The next one we have is 5 over 0. Now it's a fraction, so I might say to myself, well, fractions are rational, but not in this case, irrational, right? Because why? Because there is a 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to say the denominator. equals zero, right? We cannot have that. The denominator cannot equal zero, so it is irrational. All right, and then finally, we have the opposite of the square root of 100. Now, don't let this little negative sign confuse you. That's okay. You're just looking at the number inside the radical, and that is 100, which is a perfect square. So this is rational. And that's because it is a perfect square. Okay, so hopefully this will help you to understand the difference between rational and irrational numbers. If you need to go back and watch the video again so that you can review it one more time, I completely understand. Sometimes this is a little bit confusing for students the first time they learn it. Um, but I tried to give you all of the possible examples that you would see um, to make it easier for you. As always, if you need help, reach out to a classmate, and of course, you can always ask your teacher. I will see you next time.